Monday Night Raw was in Little Rock, Arkansas last night, and I apologize for my late review, but better late than never. We started the show off with a mixed tag team match that no one cares about. They're still pushing Drake Maverick and Renee Michelle's this couple against R-Truth and Carmella. So it was a 24-7 championship mosh pit match, which it was called. You have R-Truth retain the title when he uh, pins uh, Maverick, and what happens is him and Carmella win, and then all of a sudden, Maria, uh, Mike Canellas comes in, and um, what you had was the was the mosh pit. Everyone was outside, so uh, all of them jump on him, and then you have Mike Canellas uh, get the pin on our truth. He runs away. He gets a belt, and he's looking for his wife backstage, and he's uh, your new champion. And then uh, you have Maria backstage, and she says she needs to see her husband, and everyone leaves. Maria tells uh, Mike to let her in because she's banging on the door. He's a complete cuck. He's just the biggest cuck you'll ever see in your life. He's such a big cuck that you'd expect him to be on the stage with the Democratic debates tonight. So anyway, he's such a pussy that he has to lay down for his wife and she has to pin him and she is uh, the champ. That would eventually happen later in the show. Now we go to a gauntlet match. This was a pretty good matchup. This was a good show, to be honest, because you have good wrestling. The thing with the gauntlet match is now uh, with the no commercial thing, you're going to have situations where you have matches in the WWE where every single TV match has to have a commercial. But the problem is they can't go to commercial during mid-match. So you have two to three falls and you have a lot of gauntlet matches. And one thing I've noticed about gauntlet matches the last couple years it's basically created two stars. I remember last year, a year and a half ago in 2018, Seth Rollins was in a gauntlet match on Monday Night Raw, and he had an amazing showing. And it pretty much made him a star. He was already a star there, but like this put him on a different level. I remember after that, people started to really look at him as a major main eventer again. And then he had a, and he had a great year, and of course he went on to win the Royal Rumble the following year, and he beat Brock at WrestleMania. And then of course, uh, this past year, earlier in 2019, he had Kofi Kingston have that amazing showing on SmackDown in the gauntlet match right after Ali got hurt. And I think it was the showing in his gauntlet match gave him momentum into the Elimination Chamber where he got an amazing reaction. And of course, he beats Daniel Bryan at WrestleMania. So, um... Call the matches uh, do well. So he had Rain Cesaro start off first. It was really good. Uh, those two are really great. Ray gets the win on Cesaro. And he had Ray squash Sami Zayn quickly. And then he had Andrade Cien almost come out with Zelina Vega. Uh, they had a good match. Vega's uh, being a heel on the outside. They had a, a back and forth one. They've had uh, good matches. They were supposed to have a match at WrestleMania, I believe, this year. But uh, this didn't work out. Andrade won, uh, Ray's out, and then uh, Andrade rips Rey Mysterio's mask off, which is the biggest heel move you can do to a uh, wrestler from Mexico. Ricochet comes out, it's Ricochet and Rey Mysterio. They had a good matchup, Ricochet uh, eventually gets the win, or Ricochet and Andrade, I mean, Ricochet pins Andrade, he gets the win, and uh, this was a match, it was a number one contender match for a U.S. title at SummerSlam. Ricochet gets the match. Kayla Braxton comes in the ring. Uh, she interviews him. He does a good job. And then they show immediately after he cuts a really good promo. He says uh, people will believe in him because, you know, he didn't really believe in himself after he beat Samoa Joe. Uh, and then right away they go backstage to AJ Styles just laughing. And he's uh, a great heel there. They show Mike Kanellis and she's just going to peg him at this point for fuck's sake. That's what I'm expecting. Um, she pins him and... Uh, and then she mocks around. She mocks Titus and all the wrestlers back. She said they can't pin a pregnant woman or woman in general, but she's pregnant too. They show Alexa Bliss with Nikki Cross backstage. And Alexa must be wearing high heels because she towered over Nikki. So moment of Bliss comes out. And Alexa's terrible here. I mean, I like her, but she's getting a lot of heat online. She told the fans to shut up last week because they were dis- or a couple weeks ago because they were disrespectful during her match. She's being gone on out. I like her, but, uh, you know... She's starting, like, when she opens up, like, she has no charisma. Welcome to a moment of bliss. I don't know. I don't think this is any good. Her, She's really good on promos when she talks, but, like, the uh, this talk show stuff sucks. So her and Nikki talk about Rob Reunion last week. They talk about Stone Cold and Shawn Michaels and those guys. Um, then they, or they talked about this, the segment with Dolphin Shawn and SmackDown. They show Natalia in the ring and uh, Be- uh, Becky... 
uh, attacks her when she was in the ring with Fit Finley. It was a really good uh, segment. And Becky's a complete heel now. And uh, and it's it's weird. As soon as they go back to Alexa, Alexa says, do you condone this behavior? And the fans start cheering. And, you know, Alexa's supposed to be, I don't know, she's a moderator. But Becky, it seems like they're positioning her as a heel. Maybe it's because they think Natalia's going to be cheered over Becky Lynch at SummerSlam. It's in uh, Canada and Toronto. Uh, Natalia's home country so maybe they assume Becky's going to be booed and they might just turn Becky heel for this program kind of like a Shawn Michaels at SummerSlam 2005 when he feuded with Hulk Hogan was a heel turn for a month maybe they're doing that with Becky and then right away they're going to turn her back but she definitely came off as a heel um, Alexa says she uh, is going to beat up Becky after she faces her tonight. Then uh, they show Becky, and she makes fun of Alexa. She tells her not to enter herself by turning around. It's easier to run your remote when we are apart. You can say what you want uh, for free because you have to pay for it later. Uh, she asks uh, Nikki Cross where is her Celtic pride. I thought Nikki was, uh, I don't know if she's Irish. I thought she might have been Scottish or British. I don't know. And uh, good promo by Becky, I thought. Usos make their way to the ring. It's not to want to talk about this idiot, this fucking asshole, Jimmy Usos, douchebag. Oh, God, I don't even... Ugh, whatever, so... You have a triple threat tag team after the Raw tag team titles. I'm not going to get into an Uso rant, rant right now. Usos against Carl Anderson and uh, Luke Gallows, and then uh, the champions, Revolver, defending their match, uh, their titles here. And you go to a commercial during the match, which was kind of funny... And, man, this was definitely the highlight of the show, in my opinion. This was damn good. This was really, really, really good. I really enjoyed this. You had a surprise. You have new champions, the club. Gallows and Anderson won the titles. I don't know what they're calling themselves, the OC, like that TV show, that reality. Not reality. It's like a a children, a teenager coming of age story, something like that. Isn't that what the OC was, if I'm not mistaken, like Dawson's Creek or something? But... You have new champs. They get the title with the Magic Killer. Decent choice to give them the belts. They're really good. Um, you know, I don't have a problem with them getting the titles. I, Revolver are kind of boring if champs are going to be gone in probably less than a year, to be quite honest. I don't think it's a huge deal. Uh, when it comes to the Usos, they should not be getting anything. Anything. They shouldn't get any push for, like, a year. Um, I wish. I think Jimmy Uso should probably be released, in my opinion. But they'll never do that for obvious reasons. Uh, but they're going to push these guys. They have... All three of them are champs. AJ's U.S. champ, Gals and Anderson are tag champs. They show AJ in the back uh, celebrating, uh, and he's a celebrate. Uh, the, he celebrates with them after they win the titles. They go. Uh, they show something from last week. They show Shawn Michaels being attacked by Dolph Ziggler. I don't think they're doing a match at SummerSlam. I really hope not. They show Eric and Ivor walking backstage. They kill two guys. I don't know who these guys are. Cole Cutter and Johnny Jones. Uh, backstage, they show Street Profits, same thing, it's kind of boring, it's just, I'm sick of these guys, I don't know what they're going to do with them, just push them already, they show Seth Rollins stops by, and, uh, and Angelo says it's Dolph Ziggler, has some smoking, uh, coming from, uh, what Dolph did to Sean, and they had, uh, Angelo, uh, say, uh, I don't know who this Angelo guy is, but, uh, they, he's the guy, I think, I see the janitor, I don't remember. Um, they show Becky Lynch walking backstage as we go to commercial. So, you have Becky Lynch and Alexa Bliss. And what happens here is an injury angle. And what is, is they go on for a while. They're having a match. Alexa's just not very good. She's gorgeous. That's the best thing she has. But her promos have been lacking for the last year. Or ever since, you know what, ever since she came back from injury, it looked like her career had been over. Everything's gone downhill. Her promos are boring. She's beautiful. She looks hot as ever. That's their best thing. She's gorgeous to look at. Uh, but, I mean, like, in the ring, she's just not good. And I don't know if she doesn't have any confidence, but she, man, I, I think she'd be better off as a valet and just out of the ring. Like, you can have her, I don't want the moment of bliss. Have her talk. Have her be a valet. That's where, that, she was great at NXT as that, but she can't work anymore, in my opinion. She's going to, her career is going to get over. She's going to get another concussion. And her talk show segments are fucking abysmal. So what happens here is uh, there's an injury angle. They sell it. Uh, they show uh, Becky hitting an, an explode and Alexa her, hold her ankle. Becky is pulled away. Alexa starts to cry and the referee starts to check on Alexa. And then the medical staff checks on Alexa's, Alexa's ankle. Uh, they stop the match and it's strange because like this was a fake injury, 100%. And Alexa's crying in the ring. Oh, and I don't know, just... 
after the thing, have Becky and Nikki fight for a while. Um, they have a match. Uh, Becky gets the win. I'm tired of Nikki Cross. She's just not any good. She's not going to be a star. Vince McMahon's not going to push someone like her, to be honest. After the match, Alexa no sells it. She attacks uh, Nikki Cross or Becky Lynch. Her and Nikki beat down Becky, and then Natalia makes her way to the ring, and then she puts the sharpshooter on Becky, gets her revenge, and uh, she is ass in the back. But I think it's one of the women, Charlie or Caruso or uh, Kayla Braxton or Sarah Scooper, one of them. I forget which one it was. Uh, but she's asked if uh, her friendship has been ruined by this title match. She says it's uh, not about being a friend, it's about being professional. And she says after she went to SummerSlam, she will not shake Becky's hands. And she wants a submission match. And uh, that looks like what we're going to get. Submission match, SummerSlam. Becky has to accept the challenge, but that looks like for sure what's happening. Uh, they show Maria taking backstage photos. Uh, they show uh, her yelling at Braun Strowman. Um, Braun, he's just not impressed. I don't know. It looked like she was going to do like a, some angle or something. Um, Dolph Ziggler's making fun of Shawn Michaels. He rips into Goldberg. He rips into both of them. I guess they could have Dolph get killed by Goldberg at SummerSlam. It's, this is the same thing Dolph Ziggler did two years ago when he had to make fun of everyone's entrances. Remember he did that? He was making fun of all the legends. I don't know if that's what he's going to do now. I'm like, why is this guy still on TV? Just go do your comedy. Why bring this idiot back? So you had Seth and Dolph. Seth wins by DQ after um, Brock Lesnar comes out. He attacks Seth Rollins. Uh, he German suplexes him, and then he sends him into the ringside barrier a few times. He German suplexes him on the floor, and he hits F5 into the ring post, and he grabs a chair, uh, hits Rollins in the back of the chair, and he sits down in front of him, and he puts him in an F5, and F5 onto the chair, and then he hits another F5 onto the chair, two of them fucking murdering him. Seth's bleeding from the mouth. Pretty grotesque here. Uh, and then... Um, he hits another F5 on the chair, and it shows Seth Rollins being stretched out. And then uh, they show Roman and, and uh, Becky both seeing uh, Seth being uh, stretched out. And then right away, they show Roman Reigns attacks uh, Samoa Joe, attack Roman Reigns. And then uh, the Giles and Anderson attack the Usos. They go back to the ambulance. It leaves the arena, but it's stopped, and uh, Brock Lesnar comes out. He throws Seth off the stretcher onto the ground. He gives him an F5 onto the stretcher. I was on its side. It looked nasty. It looked like an extremely painful bump by Rollins. It looked fucking brutal. It was really good. It was a really good segment. I thought this was a very good show, to be honest. This was one of the better shows really leading up to SummerSlam. And it made me excited, to be honest. I'm actually looking forward to SummerSlam. This was a really good angle. So, uh, this was a good... I don't know if we're going to do Rollins... Maybe Rollins is not going to be 100%. That's how they, uh, they kind of protect him. But as an angler set up the match, this was really good. So, they do the Samoan Summit. Samoa Joe comes out, and uh, he rips into Roman. Roman Reigns comes out, and uh, it's a fight. And then you have Drew McIntyre come out, and you have all the... You have the Usos come out, and it's a huge melee, big fight out, uh, out there. And then all of a sudden, Cedric Alexander jumps from the top of the Titan Tron, and he takes out everyone, which was fucking crazy. It was crazy. A giant splash destroys everyone, and then uh, he celebrates. The show ends with the Roman Reigns, Usos, and Cedric Alexander celebrating in the ring. That was a crazy uh, ending of the show. It was a good show. Raw was good. The second last show before SummerSlam was a good show, and I'm looking forward to SummerSlam. So I enjoyed it overall, and uh, hopefully SummerSlam's a good show because uh, it was a really good build, build up to the show, in my opinion. For the second biggest show of the year, they did a good job at building some of the bigger matches up.